welcome back to another episode of Steel is Real. I'm your host, Henry Wildberry, and on today's episode, we are going to dive into the next topic. topic today, we're going to look at stiffness. Now there is a whole lot we could say about bicycle frame stiffness. So this is just a primer. I want to show you some comparisons between these different materials. When you do make them into tubes, what the potential stiffness could be depending on the size of the tube that the manufacturer selected. Some of you may have never seen this bike in any of my videos. So let me just introduce you real quick. This is a, a 2009 specialized tarmac, full carbon fiber, carbon fork, carbon steer, uh, car, uh, aluminum handlebars, aluminum stem, and uh, aluminum wheels. And in 2009, this was the second to the top of the line model. So the next one up from this was a S-Works. And I decided to go one step below the S-Works because of price savings or cost and also because there isn't a whole lot of difference really when you look at the specs. I'm showing all of you guys these things because we're gonna be talking about these different kinds of materials. So anyway, this is a titanium frame. I did a 50,000 mile review video, it was one of my first YouTube videos. And as you will see, as you can see already, the diameter of the tubing is much smaller than the carbon. All right, now the last bike is this aluminum bike here. As you can see, the aluminum tubing is a lot larger diameter than the titanium, but not quite as large as the carbon fiber. I wanted to show you these bikes because we're gonna be talking about these materials. And one thing I'm gonna mention is that when you consider frame stiffness, uh, they all feel very similar. So let's go take a look at some of the data on these different materials and how they compare in terms of stiffness even though the sizes of the tubes are much different as you can. What happened over the past few weeks, we had the fire here in Sonoma County and that really disrupted my momentum in preparing this video series. What I like to do is bring in my guest today, who some of you may have seen in some previous videos of mine. Please give a warm welcome to Miss Cools. Just rode in on her bicycle. <laughs> That's right. Okay, well, thank you very Sorry, much. I look a little bit um, windblown. So thank you for doing this with me. I was, like I said, I had planned to make this a very technical presentation, and uh, then I, after the evacuation, I realized that, you know, it, it's not in the theme of this channel, really. Yeah. I mean, as much as I like to present technical information, I feel like it's out of character for what I want and how I want to present information. <clears throat> so I think this will be more interesting. Okay, yeah, maybe doing it in a technical but lighthearted way. I mean, the the subject matter is really interesting. I find it really interesting. It's educational because I don't have experience with a lot of these different um, frame materials. So mm -hmm. I think it's interesting, but uh, also doing it in a more conversational matter manner yeah that might be helpful yeah and then i was thinking also about how to just what what is the conclusion going to be you know what's it what's the main conclusion and i think with bicycles there's so much history with bicycles and materials that there isn't a whole lot that one person can really add to the conversation mm -hmm. there's so much information out there so much experience out there that I don't want to get carried away or caught up in trying to present a one-sided perspective. I see. Yeah, there's not like one conclusion that can be drawn, but um, even so, there is going to be a takeaway about why you've chosen to um, highlight steel yeah. against the other materials. Yeah, I think over the last, I don't know, maybe it's been 10 or more years, steel seems to have sort of fallen out of favor mm -hmm. for other materials that are more exotic like carbon fiber and titanium and i've even heard now they're talking about magnesium i mean there's all sorts of materials that yeah. we're looking for to solve a problem of what that's the question what's the problem we're trying to solve um, and i think there's always just the the problem comes down to 
we're looking for lightweight, stiff, but not too stiff, and aerodynamic, right? These are the main things that seem to be the driving force behind most mm -hmm. decisions. So well, you did say stiffness and you did a lot of research on frame stiffness. So I am interested, is there something that you found surprising about your research in um, comparing the stiffnesses of the different materials or particularly interesting? Yeah. Put this chart up on the screen. This is basically an Excel spreadsheet. And what I have here is, what I have is some various size tubes of different materials. So over here on this column line A, you have steel, carbon, bamboo, titanium, and aluminum. And these sizes of tubes were selected because these tubes exist and they are used for making bicycle frames. So what's actually here are realistic size tubes. Uh, and different wall thicknesses. So uh, under steel, what I'm showing is I have 858, 969. So that's the budding profile. And, and budding is basically that at the ends of the tubes are thicker than the middle part of the tube. So they thin the tube down in the middle where you don't need as much material. And that's just to make the tube lighter without sacrificing much of the stiffness. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> so I have some samples here and I have all of the geometry. So, so B, C, this, these columns along here are just um, geometry of the tube. S is the section modulus. F is the moment of inertia. And then G is the modulus of elasticity. And we've already talked about the modulus of elasticity in some of the other videos. So I'm not gonna go through it all, but you can kind of see I just plugged in those numbers that I had done in the previous videos here. Uh, the length, column H is the length of a tube. So we're picking a 23 inch long tube. And I chose that because that sort of represents a typical, say medium to large size frame. Okay. And that would be like maybe the down tube, for mm. example, because the down tube is going to be a little bit longer than the top tube because it's a triangular shape. So I'm going to go with 23 inches. And uh, over here I chose a load, and this is gonna be the load that I've applied to the tube based on some frame analysis tools that I can show you later, and some assumptions in frame analysis that I used. Um, but I picked 50 pounds as the, as the, the load we're gonna, we're gonna look at. And then here, this is actually the, the deflection of that tube. And then right here we have the, the stress. This is the stress in those different tubes with that same amount of force uh, with, those, with that load of 50 pounds. So the force in the tube, sorry, let me, re -say, let me say this again because I wanna make sure I don't make a mistake explaining mm -hmm. this. So this is the stress with that given load based on the boundary conditions that I've established for this tube. And I will, I'll show you those boundary conditions in a minute. Right here, this is the weight of the tube itself. And then over here, this is the density of, of the material. And then this last column is the specific stiffness. And specific stiffness is the stiffness, which is the modulus of elasticity divided by the density of the material. So before we go all the way back to all this other information, a lot of people will look at just specific stiffness or specific strength mm -hmm. and make determinations based on that. That carbon fiber, for example, is gonna have a higher uh, specific stiffness than steel. Carbon fiber is gonna have a higher specific strength because carbon fiber has a low density and a high strength. So you have a very high specific stiffness and a very high specific strength. The thing is, it has, if you look at the actual stiffness, which is this modulus of elasticity, yeah, that's the, the linear, remember we looked at this chart right here, mm -hmm. linear elastic? Yeah. This slope of that line, mm -hmm. that's what this column is. Carbon fiber, when it is actually made into a, a laminate, when you actually laminate the fibers into different orientations, uh -huh. this is a kind of realistic stiffness. If you look at just the carbon itself without the epoxy resin and the layup, mm -hmm. the stiffness, the high, what they call like high and super high modulus carbon, very, very stiff. Okay. But you lose a lot of that stiffness when you lay it up into a matrix. Which would they, they have to do with bike frames, is that right? You, can't, you have to. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, when a car, so a carbon fiber bike, when it's manufactured, they choose a certain layup mm -hmm. in different tubes. They do different layups in order to maximize material properties for the whole frame mm -hmm. by choosing which direction to orient those fibers. But if you just took a laminate, a, a sample of that, and you bent it and you measured the deflection or you pulled on it in this case, you know, the tensile module. This is all tensile. I'm sorry, is that what you said we're seeing right here? Yeah, this oh, column okay. is the tensile modulus of elasticity. So, um, yeah, when it's made into a laminate. <clears throat> So that's what this table shows us. And one of the things I was going to highlight and why I put some of these boxes in different colors was because I thought it would be interesting to go through this list and show that, you know, you can basically build a steel tube uh, that's 0.64. Like in this case, I chose this one. It's 0.64 pounds. This one is carbon. It's 0.63 pounds. And then the, down here in bamboo, I have two that are, you know, closely they weren't exactly the same weight, so there's, you know, you can look at 0.6 or 0.8. It's very closely weighted to these others. And then for titanium, here's one that's 0.62. And aluminum is 0.65. So I've chosen of these different size tubes, one that are like one from each that's all about the same weight. And then if we look at that, we can see that by weight mm -hmm. and by stiffness, they're very similar. Of course, the difference is going to be carbon, but let's just look at steel. So if we just took this column, this row here, 858, oversized, 31.75 millimeter diameter tube, the weight of that tube, 23 inches long, is 0.64 pounds. And when it's loaded with these boundary conditions that we'll, I'll show you in a second, you get 0 0.096 inches of deflection. If you come down to um, titanium under those same conditions, same approximate weight, you'd have a tube that's one and a half inches in outside diameter with a 979 budding profile. The deflection's very close to the same. It's 0 0.085 inches. This is also a little bit lighter, but not much. And it's very close to the same deflection. Would that be even a noticeable amount of difference to a cyclist riding this bike? Probably not. You probably wouldn't be able to pick that. Between steel and titanium? Yeah, between these two pieces, these two tubes, like if you were to have these that size. Yeah. exact two okay. tubes, I don't think a cyclist would notice the difference. And then the last one we'll look at is this aluminum one. So here again, it's 0 0.0, it's 0 0.1. So 0 0.096 is almost 0 0.1. Uh, so the aluminum is slightly stiffer, but if you look at the weight, it's also just a tiny bit heavier. So by... So what I was going to say earlier was that, you know, most of the time you could just look at the stiff, the specific stiffness mm -hmm. and say, look, they're going to be the same because the specific stiffnesses are all the same. So like aluminum is 106, steel is 101, titanium is 92. So they're all relatively the same when it comes to the metals. Now where carbon fiber comes in here is it has a higher and same with bamboo higher specific stiffness. So they have a higher stiffness for the amount of weight that they are. So they, you know, you know, so in a way they, they utilize the stiffness of the material better than titanium and, and aluminum and, car, and, uh, and steel. Is that what you expected to find or did that kind of surprise you when you? I mean, that's the advantage of carbon is that it's very light and stiff. Mm -hmm. It's also very strong too. What I think, so what I think I realized in doing this was just how much larger a carbon tube needed to be in order to be stiffer than a steel tube. So look look at look at this tube here. Let's go to this one right here. So this tube is 1.3 inches in diameter. Uh, one, one and three eighths inches in diameter, and it has a wall thickness of 0 0.06. If you compare that that stiffness with point that deflects 0 0.098. So the closest tube to steel is this one right here, this 858 oversize, which okay. is 31.75 millimeters outside diameter. The thickness is 0 0.019 or 0 0.02 if we round it up to compared to 0 0.06. So look how much thicker that tube is in order to have the same thickness uh, or the same 
the, the same stiffness. Okay. So not only is it the tube has to be thicker, but it also has to be larger in diameter. Is that That's right? right. Yeah. Because 31 millimeters, 31.75 mm -hmm. by 25.4, is a that's a one and a quarter inch diameter tube. This is one and three eighths. So it's larger in diameter and it's also thicker. In order to get the exact same stiffness as a steel tube. Okay, so that makes me wonder like so the material that's favored in aerodynamic bikes, making aerodynamic bikes, is carbon, right? Mm -hmm. But so what you're showing here is that you have to make a frame larger in diameter, doesn't that interfere with the aerodynamics of a bike? When when a tube's bigger? Yeah. Like Yes. So a so if two tubes were analyzed, and I'm not an aerodynamics expert, but <laughs> I do know that if aerodynamics is a function of surface area mm -hmm. and uh, frontal area really. So it's how much area is the object, how wide is the object going through the wind has a big is a big part of the aerodynamics so a wider tube would be less aerodynamic with it the exact same shape would be less aerodynamic than a round tube but carbon because it's so easy to manipulate and change the shape you can make the shape more aerodynamically you can make it more advantageous aerodynamically by shaping it better whereas with steel you know we're generally making steel round I see. And round shapes are not optimal for aerodynamics, but because it's because it's uh, narrower, it actually you're not giving up that much by uh, having a smaller. You're not giving that much up. Is what I'm saying. So if you had the really wide carbon tube but super aerodynamic, mm -hmm. that might be better Th than okay. a smaller steel, but by only a small margin. Okay, that made me wonder. Do you happen to know to know what the kind of material the speed record um the current speed record what kind the, of material the bike the current world record mm -hmm. for what kind of world record <laughs> like a like <laughs> wait what like was a my time question? trial no I when mean, they do the wind a, when they do on the track oh on a like, track uh -huh. well there's different speed records that are out there <laughs> so the so actually Let's start with the human powered speed record. Uh -huh. The human powered speed record is done. They do a they do a test out in I think it's in Arizona or not Arizona, in Nevada. Okay. And it's they do I think they do it every year. And the human powered land speed record is something like 85 miles an hour or something like that. Okay. Now these guys are inside of a very mm -hmm. they're in a recumbent bicycle yeah. and they're inside they have fairings mm -hmm. and I mean the whole bike is inside of a you know, an aerodynamic shell. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's like a little vehicle, but it's only two two wheels and it's pedal powered. Yeah. So that record is definitely made out of that bike is definitely made out of carbon fiber okay. and you know, I mean there is some <laughs> I guess exotic I been materials used. More specific. I was thinking yeah. of the uh, <clears throat> in fact let's see if we can cycling look, let's on look, a track. Yeah, record. let's see if we can look up the the land speed record. Mm -hmm. The human powered land speed record. So here's what a current land speed record bike would look like. It's an egg, as this article says, it's an egg shape. If we can get through all the advertisements. Um, that's what, that's okay. kind of what it would look like. So you have, in yeah. this one, you notice they don't even have So this a one, the pr yeah. That you can't even see outside. You, they're looking through cameras. Wow. That's because when it comes to aerodynamics, any little discontinuity of the shape mm -hmm. creates crazy turbulence. And so this is... So this is a person inside. So yeah. with this, it's all about the material and the shape of it. But what I was thinking the mm -hmm. track record on a personal bicycle where the person... I would... The person... Yeah. You know, there was a... a lot. That's actually <clears throat> interesting that you asked that. There's this documentary called The Flying Dutchman. And uh, this guy won. Oh. oh wow, this isn't what I was looking for. Let me look for the wrong Flying Dutchman. Flying Dutchman cyclist. Cyclist. Okay. Cycling. I think that's how it went by. Yeah, Graham I mean, Obrey. Graham Obrey. So the Flying Scotsman. Oh, oh Flying Scotsman. Scotsman. No, sorry. The Dutchman. We could have talked. Been talking about pirates instead. That's why the pirate ship showed up. Yeah. 
So he broke the world hour record in July 1993 and in April 1994 and was the individual pursuit world champion in 93 and 95. He was known for his unusual riding positions and for the old faithful bicycle he built, which included parts from a washing machine. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, this example, hey, what you're asking, shows you that bike frame itself is only a small part, if anything, in the aerodynamics of a bicycle frame. Do and in a it? bicycle... Yeah, let's see the bike right here. Uh, in, a, in a bicycle race test. So Aubrey had built frames for his bike shop and made another for his record attempt. Instead of traditional dropped handlebars, it had straight bars, like those in a, of a mountain bike. He placed them closer to the saddle than usual and rode with the bars under his chest, his elbows bent and tucked onto his sides. Let's pull up an image of this. This is the one right here. Okay. This image where he's got the bars and he's tucked down in this position. And uh, what about the fork? Yeah, where's the fork? Yeah. Is that a one-sided fork? I think maybe. Oh, it is a one-sided fork. Wow, he was really ahead of his time. Look at that. A one-sided fork. The down, the down, there was no top tube. It was just a down tube. So less, you know, less parts for the wind to have to go over. But at the end of the day, it was his body position on the bike that made the biggest difference. Okay. So the UCI banned this position. They won't allow anyone to sit like that anymore. So if you noticed in some of those other photos, they had it where his arms were extended out. I see. And that's the more common position now. That I think you're required to have your hands on some sort of handlebar out extended outward so that it, you know, I think the idea is that the UCI or whoever regulates these world record attempts wants the... To maintain a certain uh, bike, bicycle, bicycle, bicycle structure so it doesn't become this whole different machine entirely. Is that what it is? Yeah, and then it's supposedly to measure human potential, not okay. so much equipment potential. Mm -hmm. So if everybody were using the same position or mm -hmm. relatively same position, I see. then we're measuring human potential versus mechanical okay. potential or okay. mechanical engineering mm -hmm. uh, potential. I don't know. I, I think that's the point, but I'm not sure. So, okay. So this whole series was about um, highlighting steel, even though we um, uh, brought to light really interesting things, aspects of uh, other materials, mm -hmm. which were the stiffness. Yeah, the... bamboo is very stiff. Mm -hmm. Bamboo is actually, what I think was really cool about doing this research for myself was to find out about bamboo and how it is basically, if you look at my chart, it's, it's more or less comparable, almost identical to carbon fiber. So bamboo is like literally a natural form of carbon fiber. And I wonder why we aren't, exp every once in a while I'll read an article about how amazing um, bamboo is as a bike material, but I wonder why it has never taken off as being... It's, you would think, I mean, it's probably easier to make, it's more renewable, mm -hmm. and it has the same mechanical properties as carbon fiber. Mm -hmm. And yet it's right there. It's been yeah. there all this time. I, yeah, it's surprising to me why it's not being used more. I mean, look at look at this one. Here's a tube, a bamboo tube, two inch outside diameter. Check this out. Two inch outside diameter, 0.2 inch thickness compared to carbon. It weighs exactly the same. It weighs 0.63 pounds versus 0.6 or 0.68. The deflection, 0.28 and 0.28, identical deflection. Hmm. Yeah. I wonder if there's so anything that we don't know about um, the difficulty of attaching parts to it, like stems and mm -hmm. seat posts and things like that, that we might not know. I'm like, wow. So there's a but, bamboo bike and yeah. it has a carbon fork. So, and then the head, the headsets are pressed, you know, or not pressed in, but the headsets are fitted into the head tube. Yeah. I mean, this entire head tube could be made out of carbon fiber. Same with the bottom bracket. Okay. And then the car, then the bamboo tubes are joined to that carbon mm -hmm. fiber. Uh, I'm not sure if that's how they do it, but look at this one. That one kind of indicates that that's possibly what they're doing. They're just mm -hmm. making carbon fiber lugs, more or less, or for a lack of a better term, 
Here, look at this image. So that looks like it's all wrapped in carbon fiber. And uh, that's basically a carbon fiber bike. But it does have round tubes. And that large yeah. of a diameter round tube is not going to be as aerodynamic as a carbon tube that's shaped aerodynamically. However, the other side of that is that even if it were to be more aerodynamic, the differences come down to body position yeah, for, that's, for the most part. That's when we have to ask ourselves, how much does that matter compared to the human powering the machine, right? Right. Like how much are we going to make aerodynamics the top priority mm -hmm. when there are other maybe more important factors to consider? Yeah. One of the reasons or mm -hmm. one of the conclusions that I wanted to make about yeah. steel was actually in this in this light. And that mm -hmm. is that steel or even bamboo, these are materials that are more mm -hmm. recyclable and more renewable. The biggest issue facing carbon is its sustainability. There was a great article I read where they uh, were talking about recycling carbon and right now there's no way to recycle it and reuse it as a structural material. They're using it for non-structural. They're mm -hmm. taking the old structural parts and they're breaking them down and then turning them into non-structural things like door handles and I stuff. See. But there yeah. is a, there's apparently piles of bicycle frames. That reminds me of um, this PBS documentary I watched. It was, oh, Hugh Hauser. Hugh Hauser? Mm -hmm. You think you guys will remember him as the one that did the California Gold series? Uh -huh. That he did on um, tires and kind of the same thing. There's no way, to, you can't remake a tires back into, um, the tire rubbers back into new tires because it's compromised maybe. Mm -hmm. So it kind of reminds me of the same problem that tires face. Like, so you have mounds of tire graveyards, I call them, that they try to make into other things like sidewalks or playground materials or just trying to find out what they can make um, all this rubber with because once a tire is compromised, this you, know, comp it, you can't keep using it because someone's safety is going to be... Anyway, so yeah, the problem with tire reminds me of the problem with tires reminds me of the problem with carbon, it sounds like. Yeah, it's exactly so. the same problem. So what mm -hmm. do we do with all this old carbon fiber? Maybe there's some technology that will be developed in the future that will, that will answer that question. But as of right now, we are basically amassing all this carbon with nowhere to go with it. So that's why I like steel, and I think that's partly why I started this discussion from the perspective of steel is mainly because steel, for two reasons. One is that steel has lost a lot of its, uh, you know, market share in mm -hmm. the last decade or so in favor of these other more exotic materials. And so I just wanted to point out that steel hasn't become obsolete, is that it is actually still very relevant today. We can still make the tubes just as stiff, just as light if we need to. Uh, and and it also is recyclable. Okay, um, so you called this um, series Steel is Real. That's the yeah. slogan that we uh -huh. uh, uh, use to talk about steel. So um, what I heard is steel is real recyclable. Mm -hmm. Steel is real uh, relevant still. What else is real about steel? Steel is real renewable. Renewable, okay. And steel is... Uh, real re flexible? Well, that's may not be a good that thing. That may not be a good well, thing. Well, actually, let's <laughs> okay. talk about frames. For flexing. me, it is, but not for everybody. There was a ref this. There's a test on Sheldon Brown's website here, which was a frame deflection test. And uh, this, if you guys are interested in more about this, I'm going to link this article. But this was this article was written by Damon Rinard, and he did a frame deflection test uh, and re published his results here. And he went through and showed all these different frames over the years that he's tested. And you can see that just by scanning down that the frame deflections are all very, very similar. Wow, and this really was are. Yeah, and this was all different materials. This is steel, aluminum, carbon, uh, titanium. So you can kind of see that they're all about the same. The, the biggest thing that he said that determined the frame stiffness or flexibility was the frame size. Mm. And one thing that he okay. noticed was that smaller frames were stiffer. And mm. that's mainly because they don't really change the tubing that much depending oh. on the sizes. So okay. a larger frame, if you use a longer tube, is mm -hmm. going to be a lot more flexible. So to compensate, you have to make the tube bigger. But mm -hmm. they don't seem to do that when they make frames smaller. Mm. Okay. They don't scale it down geometrically in order to match the stiffness. So Because they don't want to make all these different sizes 
tubes. They just want to cut them shorter or longer, but they don't want to make the diameter that's necessary because right. they want to do a run. Of, they guess. want to do a run of bikes using the yeah. same materials. That's more so efficient that's for manufacturing for the bike yeah. company, but well, not efficient for the rider. So, but, um, okay. so here are my modeling assumptions. So what I did is uh, pull up this, this diagram here. This is the one I used. This diagram right here, let's see, can I go to this website? So this is from the San Jose State University uh, Engineering Department, and it's loading. And this, so if we look at this chart here, number nine, it's got the red box around it. If you treat a bicycle frame like this, so you have these different coefficients here, mm -hmm. And I can just quickly explain what this is. When you have these boundary conditions, these rigid boundaries, this is the boundary condition. So sometimes you have a boundary that is that can rotate, and sometimes you have a boundary that cannot rotate. So if you assume that the boundary condition cannot rotate, so like let's say where you have the down tube going into the bottom bracket, or the down tube going into the head tube, mm -hmm. if you assume those are perfectly rigid boundaries, that they do not rotate, then the stiffness of the tube is going to equal this coefficient right here, 12 EI over L cubed. That's the coefficient, that's the stiffness coefficient. Now if you assume that the boundary condition can actually rotate, like this diagram up here at eight, what that is saying is that you know, your head tube would be bending as your bike frame mm -hmm. is bending mm -hmm. relative to the bottom tube. And that doesn't really happen. Uh -huh. So that's not a fair, that wouldn't be the most accurate way to model a bike frame. So what I did is I chose this number nine because my assumption is that the bottom bracket shell and where the tubes join together is a very rigid connection. Mm -hmm. This is just an approximation. It is not, you know, what a more accurate way to model a bicycle frame would be to make a 3D model. Mm -hmm and you put that into a finite element analysis program and run various loading conditions on it to actually come up with the true deflections. And you could get a very, very close approximation doing it that way. This is a less um, accurate, but it is enough for us to compare different tubes to each other. To each so, other, yeah. yeah. So this is a relative comparison. Because it, even though it doesn't rotate uh, to, uh, like that we can't see it rotate certainly there's got to be some movement that's not being detected in there that's right there is <clears> some <throat> minor you're... rotation occurring <clears throat> yeah. at those joints um, but but if you're doing the same thing to all the materials then it's a good way to compare yeah. them that's right what we're looking at so that was how I generated these deflection numbers in this table of values here do you have any questions <laughs> <laughs> So. Well, we have a lot of links to put in the bottom of this video. We probably should link every study and every documentary and every person That's right. we've talked about. <clears throat> yeah, every in person. case anyone wants to dive deeper into yeah. any of it. We talked about yeah. the Flying Scotsman. We talked yeah, about... Yeah, um, we did. A lot of other things. We'll go back. We'll have a lot of links <clears throat> in case anyone wants to dive deeper. So, um, speaking of stiffness... Uh, my joints are getting stiff sitting here and uh, it's getting, <laughs> the sun's going down. So I wonder if we should take those flexible yeah. This is going to be the longest YouTube the, video that I've ever ride. made. Yeah. I think this is going to be the yeah. biggest, the longest whoever YouTube video. Si whoever made it through this video probably is. Congratulations. Yes. You're the winner. <laughs> the one person. There's going to be somebody. One person. No, but seriously, um, anyway, I think. I, I was thinking of doing more topics on this discussion, but I think where I wanted to leave it was just that, you know, steel is real because uh, it's still relevant. Mm -hmm. It's a material we have a lot of history with. We've used it for over, you know, hundreds of years now. We have his the experience of using steel. So it's very well documented. It's very well understood. The behavior of steel is it's very predictable. And it's still very relevant in today's world and modern world we live in. You need less so, machinery to make a bike with it, right? That's right. You can make it more easily with s simple hand tools. Mm -hmm. It can be made manufactured locally very easily. There's a whole bunch of reasons it's good. Yeah. Is it the only material that could be used to build a bike frame? No. Are there other advantages that it of other materials? Yes. This is not to take away from those other materials. This is simply to highlight one material and to say that it has 
like let's not let it fall into the you know the dustbin of history yeah. that's all do you have anything yes. you want to say to end this video no. are we following thanks for joining to me the dustbin. today <laughs> we're heading to the dustbin <laughs> thank you we're... for sticking around and watching this i hope this was informative and uh, hopefully from here on out we'll have videos that are more fun and lighthearted to stick to the theme of this channel. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want it to be about, is lighthearted films. So with that, well, thanks thank for watching. Thank and, you, Mr. Wildberry. Uh, thank you, Miss Cools, yeah. for joining me today. It was really fun. was fun. And maybe we'll see some of them out on the road. Cheers, have a, yeah. cheers to that. Cheers. <laughs> have a nice day. We'll see you next time.